Hello and welcome back to episode 11 of the Power On Retro Gaming Podcast. We're finally back. It's been about a year since our last episode. It has been about a year. My name's Scott and as always, the charming James or Parfo is with <laughs> me. And, well, first of all, how are you, James? Well, I'll call you Parfo for the sake of continuity. <laughs> how are you? I'm pretty good, Scott. How are you? Good, going well. Uh, since the last time we spoke, uh, I believe, which was in 2017. That is correct. That's correct. So we uh, we had, we had uh, episode 10. We had some contract breakdowns and <laughs> <laughs> we weren't able to record. But look, we're back and as we say every episode, we will try to make more episodes um, <laughs> to please our... Faithful th- listeners. Yeah, 35 subscribers on YouTube. <laughs> Hit the notification bell. Uh, anyway... So, yeah, anyway, we're back and we're going to talk about some games today, uh, which is why I'm sure you're listening. But anyway, let's get right into it because people have been waiting a long time. Uh, Anyway, so (laughs) reasons for why we took so long to come back is just basically, uh, look, we had some housing changes. Housing um, changes, yeah, definitely. A lot of that sort of stuff. Yeah. so I guess that's sort of just, and just basically being lazy. We really could have done it if we wanted to, but uh, look, a lot, a lot of changes have happened over the last year. So um, look, now we're all we're both set up again. It's something we could probably do on a more regular basis. Yeah. Anyway, flying into it, let's talk about games we have played uh, recently, or not so recently. It depends when you listen, last time you listened, uh, and also completed. Do you want to fire off? One that you've sort of beaten recently or played at recent times, my man? I can definitely do that. Uh, the last game that I've beaten was Donkey Kong Country Returns on the Wii. Oh. Now, if you haven't played that, it's pretty much a return to form from the old Donkey Kong Country games on the Super Nintendo. Yeah. Uh, very fun, but actually very hard. Side-scrolling action? Yeah, side-scrolling. It's How just- is the music? Music was done by the same guy that oh. did the original three. Oh, Music was absolutely terrific. And what is the status of the giant ostrich from the third world in the original game? Dead, alive, what? missing? He was missing? What the hell was his name? I don't know. Ollie? Uh, I don't think that was it. I don't think it was it. But... The, the big banana falls on his head at the end, doesn't it? Um, when you it, beat him. When you like get... King K. Rool? Oh, no. Hang on. I don't know. Next week's episode, we'll be talking about that. We will follow up. <laughs> Put that down on that bit of paper. Uh, some of the games I've beaten in 2019 as well was um, the Flintstones 2 on the NES. Mm. Now, this is a game that I've been wanting since the podcast actually first started back in 2016. Was that the game that was highlighted in the Game Chase, Chases episode? Yeah, that was like their episode four. Yeah. Um, they got it like real cheap and it was... They couldn't believe it Yeah. on how cheap they got it. Um, That's right. He found it and they had it marked for a... Yeah, it was marked at, yeah. like for the other game's price. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I think they went to Game Exchange. Oh, uh, yes. Um, also known in Australia as Game Exchange. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah, no, good game. Uh, I got it at a decent price for what it usually goes for. Um, so I've actually got the actual copy. Oh, yeah. Um, it was only released in PAL territories in Italy. Oh. Um, also tackled on Titanfall 2, which was actually a very surprisingly good game. Yeah, I've heard that. I own it. Um, didn't play the first one. The first one was Xbox only, and it was online only. That's right. I, the second one I've lent to my brother, so I, yeah, I can't play it if I wanted to right now. But Single player was very good. That's good. What was it like? Halo sort of game or... I don't even know. Um, well, you're in your mech. Yeah. So you, you're you playing as either the human or the mech and you're taking... Taking names. Taking names and killing people as you do. Oh, golly. Um, but it was just the mechanics of it all. It was just done really well. Yeah. I actually, that's a game I would like to see another one for. Well... Let me just ring up Bill Gates and order a Titanfall 3. <laughs> um, beat uh, South Park, The Stick of Truth. Uh, yes. That was actually quite good. It's funny too. Uh, Resident Evil 2. 
Now, with as in the remake, the remake, yes, yeah. the remake. Yeah. Okay. Well, well, it sounds like you've knocked over a few little little tiles there. Did you beat oh. other than Flintstones? Have you completed <laughs> anything else retro? Because uh, this is a retro gaming podcast. That is correct. Not last three years <laughs> release dated podcast. Uh, in That's terms of retro, one. besides the Flintstones, the last two that are beaten uh, was Super Metroid and uh, Super Mario Brothers 3. Ah, yes. Super Mario Brothers Brothers 3. So that's the first time you've completed that? First time I've ever completed that. I've been trying to complete that since what it came out, to be honest with you, when I got it on the Super All-Stars pack on the Super Super Nintendo. Yeah, yeah. Super Metroid uh, I've beaten twice now. Really? Yeah. With save states or classic? Classic, because it's got save slots. Oh, that's right, it does. I knew that. (laughs) That's why I'm the host. (laughs) Um, Oh, that's good. Sounds like you're getting through a few. Yeah, and Um, what about yourself? Well, I'm glad you asked, because in the last sort of year or so, I have only really... In terms of retro, I haven't really beaten too much. I did complete the original Super Mario Brothers, which I'm sure to many people who live through the 90s isn't a big deal. But to me it was, because... Having like having Super Mario All Stars, I just never completed it, and it was nice to complete it. I did have to use save states on the Switch, but I beat it. It was it's just cool to accomplish that game because it's probably the first game most of us ever played. Yeah, it was the first game that yeah. I ever played. Yeah, so I beat that. Um, in terms of retro, yeah, not much in terms of retro. Uh, I did complete um, Persona Three on the PSP, yep. which was about a seventy-hour game. Oh wow! Um, so on the PSP, a, seventy yeah, hours. Yeah, took a few. It took a few years on and off. Um, it was quite difficult. It's a very different uh, layout to the PlayStation Two version, but generally the same. Uh, I love the PSP. It's probably my favorite uh, gaming platform, I guess you call format. It's yep. just fantastic. Um, but yeah, Persona Three. I beat uh, Tropical Freeze, Donkey Kong on the Wii U. Okay. Um, so yeah, not too much. Because I don't really like to start anything new until I beat others. When you're playing JRPGs and stuff like that and games that you get stuck on, it can lead to a sort of a dry spell in terms of other starting games. and completing. Yeah. yeah, because they go on for all... They like do. They massive games. On. And then there's, you know, there's games where I play, such as fighting games like Street Fighter and stuff, where you're not really trying to accomplish anything. You're just sort of playing for fun. Yep. Um, so that's, that's sort of it for me um, that I can think of. I did beat Evil Within... Um, which was quite good, and Resident Evil 7 okay. on Xbox One, and Doom as well. But, you know, those games, to me, you, know, you just sort of knock them on the head and that's it. Um, 7 was good, though, Resident Evil 7. Yeah, it was. It was a bit different. Um, I liked the flashback sort of scene where you have to... I think it's like a, a booby trap room and you have to escape. Yep. Uh, I did like that, so that was cool. Um, but Doom was very hit and miss to me. It was just sort of... I just played through it and didn't think twice. About there was it. no real story to it that yeah. captivated me, but the action was good. Yeah, that's right. Just, once it was done, even with you and I did enjoy. It's a little bit different. Um, yeah, but yet to play Resident Evil 2. Um, never beat it on the PlayStation 1, but did play it. So I wonder if that'll set. And I know we've spoken in the show before about um, remakes, but I wonder if that'll set, set us up for a remake of number three because they have done one already. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Now done two. Three possibly code Veronica X. I don't know, but uh-huh. I'm sure. Look, these things they do print a bit of money. So um, with the Final Fantasy VII remake coming out, that'll probably kickstart a lot of these old titles. I think so, but uh, I, I like fresh ideas myself. Yeah, I like fresh ideas, but I understand like people are drawn to things that they can read up about online. And a new game, it really has to captivate an audience, and then the audience get behind it and say, okay, everyone play this. Whereas Final Fantasy VII, people might not have ever played it or seen game footage, but they know it's good. I think it's even listed in the top five games up there with like Ocarina of Time, um, Bubsy 2. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> but we'll see what happens in the future. We'll go back to that. We'll touch on that a bit later. But anyway, we uh, well, we, we went to New York and um, well, I suppose I'll let you explain why we went to New York. Yeah, so I went to New York for my wedding day. Mm-hmm. Um, it was good to have us all there. And 
during one day we I was visiting you. Uh, mm -hmm. Where were we staying again? Greenswich Village. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> I was trying to remember the street, but um, yeah. Uh, what was Midtown? It was around Midtown. Yeah. I think it was in the village. It's got a lot of uh, record stores and um, yeah, some cool buildings and uh, some old video game stores as well nearby. So yeah. we went and actually checked out what was to offer in New York in terms of retro gaming. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we hopped into a couple stores. Some were Japanese sort of um, novelty toys. Um, yeah, overpriced if you ask me. Yeah, I thought so too. As most things are in New York. You pretty much well, we put $100 cash in your pocket and you walk home and then you look in your wallet and you got $20 left. Yeah. <laughs> well, we went to Japan and we yeah. know what those sort of things go for overseas. Yeah, yeah. Like, because it's cool because we've been to New, uh, New York now, or America, um, Japan and Korea. Yeah. Looking for games, essentially. Um, in terms of actually what you picked up in America, I know that we were only together in New York, but you went on for a few more weeks around the country. Did you collect anything that you'd like to mention? I, I did, Scott. Um, one being uh, Rad Racer 2 on the NES. Rat uh, Racer? Yeah, Rad Racer. Oh, Road Racer, sorry. No, yeah. Rad Racer. Oh, if we said Rat Racer. <laughs> no, no, Rad Racer. Rad Racer, okay. Uh, we got uh, Crystallis, which is on the NES. It's like a action uh, adventure game, mm -hmm. similar to Zelda in a way. Okay, Crystallis on the NES. Yeah, it only came out over there and in Japan as well. Right. Uh, we got Dirty Harry based on the um, the movie with Clint Easterwood. Yep. Uh, Dragon Warrior, which is uh, Eastern Wood. Yeah. Eastern Wood, yeah, and the football player. Oh. Ah. Uh, Eastwood. Clint Eastwood. Oh, Isn't it Clint Eastwood? Yeah, you said Eastern Wood. Did I? Yeah. You sure? Roll it back <laughs> later and listen. <laughs> Um, and I got a uh, Metroid Zero Mission on the GBA as well. Oh yeah, that's cool. They yeah. recently re-released that, didn't they? On the um, the I think 3DS. It... No, was no, a different. Game? That was uh, Metroid Two. Oh. So Metroid Zero Mission is a remake of the first Metroid on the NES. Right. Yeah. And that's what you got. Yeah. No. So it's like Super Nintendo graphics. Mm. Um. They added a few little things uh, to improve it. Yep. And it's kind of like Super Metroid, but the first first game that was on the NES, kind of like remastered in a way. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. All right. And, I mean, in terms of the general feel over there, I mean, we've watched YouTube, obviously the game chases, but did you feel there was a lot to offer in terms of, um, let's say, volume of games? Like, were you like, oh, I'm trying to find this, but I can't find it, or... Um, were you more like, oh, there's, there's five copies of Clock or, you know, how did you feel when you went into these stores? They're not as much as when I went in, uh, 2016, because mm -hmm. I think back then it still wasn't as big. Yeah. Uh, it's been growing, but at a point now it's, it, the stores are there, but yeah. from what is available to you, it's just a lot of common stuff. When I was there in 2016, yeah. like I bought Earthbound. Yeah. I wasn't seeing any of that sort of stuff anymore. What was that like to finish that game? <laughs> <laughs> it's probably uh, holding up a couple of books somewhere, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes. Uh, well, no, I'm just kidding. But uh, you, I think you're right, though. I think there was about a five-year sort of lapse where it was really popular to collect games. It just became popular overnight. You know, everyone was buying up stuff, selling. You could go on any gaming group and say, you know, I'm looking for... You know, whatever. I get nothing now. Yeah. If I ask, yeah, does anyone have this? No one responds. Well, yeah, you're right. And I used to post, you know, I'm looking for a black SP. Um, that's Game Boy Advance, but um, and, and within the day or yep. a couple of hours, yeah, man, forty bucks or you know whatever it was. Uh, there's none of that no more. None of that no more. Yeah, and I've left a lot of the groups. I just can't be bothered. Like, there's no point in me being in them. I've got what I wanted. I'd love a copy of Earthbound, like. But I can buy a retro, what are they called? Um, it came on the, uh, also the mini Super Nintendo. Oh, well, there, I've already got it. <laughs> you just exactly. saved me $500. <laughs> um, before we move on, what was your thoughts when we went into the uh, retro gaming store in New York? Um, 
look, I, I definitely appreciated it. I thought the staff were really helpful. I can't recall the name of the place. Um, no. I know the one Friends in Japan we went to, but I can't recall the one in um, America. But, I mean, I bought a copy of Chrono Cross. Mm-hmm. Um, I wanted to get a copy of Skullgirls on Vita, but I didn't. Um, and I think I might have got... Oh, yes, that's right. I got a copy of um, Metal Slug Anthology on the PSP, but that didn't end up working when I got home and Chrono Cross I haven't played yet. But I feel like that it was cool to see a lot of stock for these games because we don't really have anywhere in Australia where we'd go just on a busy street and say, okay, there's 10 copies of Final Fantasy VII. No, exactly. And that's, that was pretty cool to me, to just go to somewhere and see, you know, 50 boxed Super Nintendo games. And they're in English too. Yeah, in English. Like, even if you didn't collect them, it'd be it's just cool to see that. Yeah. Because, you know, we go, like, obviously we have a bit of stuff and we, you know, oh, that, that's cool, like, to see it all together. But, yeah, name a place in Australia where we'd go and we'd see that. Probably... No. You know, even at Cash Converters back in the day, you'd see, like, maybe four games. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I felt like that was cool. Um, mind you, I wasn't really looking to collect while I was over there. No. Um, but... Well, we were there for my wedding as well. We were there for your wedding, and, like, I was at the end of the trip, whereas the money had sort of already been spent, whereas yep. you were... At the um, start. ...fresh off the plane, so, you know, rolling in the Benjamins, but... <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. Yeah. <laughs> But look, I, I did. I did appreciate a good gaming store. That's, that's for sure. Yeah. Ah, well, there. So yeah, but then all in all, it was a good trip, good wedding, and everything. So good on you. <laughs> <laughs> now we will. We've talked a little bit about what we've completed. Um, well, I guess we'll just head into our latest buys. Latest buys. Latest buys. Um, latest buys. The yeah. Latest buys for me uh, is. My wife is probably going to kill me if you she You bought your this. wife? No. You paid for it? Oh, uh, wrong podcast. DuckTales 2 oh. on the NES. Okay, so you pull the trigger on that, and so what, you just went down the bank and said, I need a bit of a loan? Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so I ended up getting that one. Okay. Um, Air Fortress on the NES as well. A uh, bit of an obscure title. Yep. I hear it's actually good, and I haven't put it in yet. It only came in last week, mm-hmm. but it's made by Hal Laboratories, um, who did, like, Kirby and all that. Smash Bros. Yep. And uh, they've yeah. done a lot of good titles. Yeah. Um, I've actually got Low Low 2, which is a puzzle plat- uh, puzzle game on the NES. Yeah. Uh, it's and also made stuff. by Hal Laboratories. Yeah. I've got... It was the only one I needed in the trilogy. Mm-hmm. So I thought I'd get that as well. And uh, Gunsmoke on the NES as well, which is uh, pretty much a shoot 'em up kind of like um, Sunset Riders, but it's a vertical. So you're moving around and you're shooting while you're walking around the streets like a cowboy. Moving forward as yeah. opposed to side to side. Yeah. Well, yeah, like yeah. A you're moving up. Swift. Yeah. Super Swift sort of style. And that's about it. Uh, oh, today I bought Mega Man 11 on the PS4. Yeah. Um, that's the first game that they made without the original maker. Because yeah. he left a few years ago to make the Mighty Number no. 9. Yeah. And that bombed hard while this has been doing all right. Well, that's good. Do we have, uh, I don't suppose we know any figures of sales. There's not really, is there any even a database for that sort of stuff? There probably is, but you have to dig a little deeper. Yeah, you probably have to. Into the web. Uh, what about yourself? No, look, there hasn't been a lot of latest buys for me. Um, I did get the Blaze Blue uh, Persona tag team fighting game. You did mention this, which yeah, which was pretty cool. Um, but like all that stuff, it's there's not a lot to it. Um, Xeno Xenoblade, not Xenoblade, Xeno Chronicles. I don't even know what it's called. On uh, not the second one on the Switch. Yep. Uh, Xeno, something Xeno. Been playing your Switch much? Yeah. Look, I've been playing um, a bit of Smash Bros. Yeah, I have. Look, to be honest, yeah, I have. Um, I got the Pokemon on that at Christmas, and I've been playing that and Smash Bros. But mainly just Smash Bros. To be honest. Yep. Uh, I like it because it's it, it's cool. You know, when you, you just sit down and just grab it and it's ready to go. Yeah. Um, yep. The online store is pretty good. It could be better. It could have you know all SNES titles and stuff on there. 
I really don't know why they don't pull the trigger with that stuff and just start, you know, chuck all the GameCube games on there, all that stuff. Like, what what are they waiting for? Is that it is the question. Third-party uh, agreements, maybe? Maybe well, they have to pay them off? I don't know. Yeah, look, I can understand that, but, I mean, if they own Mario enough to put him in Smash Brothers, surely they can put, you know, Mario Sunshine... Mario. They could go with like the first party games. Yeah, yeah like but that would be enough for me. You know, that's the Wind Waker. I, it's almost like they don't do it just because it's. Oh, well, I can't even give they, a reason that I can think of. Uh, I'm not too sure. Maybe they don't want to do it because it, later on down the road they can't do it. So I don't know. I can't even tell you. I guess well, they recently mm. or a couple of years ago mm. they brought out the Wind Waker HD thing on the Wii U. They did, um, and there's talk they're going to do Skyward Sword. Are they? Well, there's talk on HD, but when the Wind Waker came out on GameCube, they released a HD Ocarina of Time with it. Yeah, they did. Um, limited edition with, like, the Master Quest. So I think they have the power to do that, but they just they just don't really do it, yep. which is sad because it would be cool for fans. And it also keeps people interested in old games, you know? Like, Wind Waker and games like that that maybe a lot of people didn't play because they were too young or never had the console, it'd be fun to go back and play that. And you know? experience it. Yeah, they yep. do it a lot on the PlayStation Store. You see now PS3 games and PS2 games on there. Just, you know, to me it's like... It, it's just an area that's never really been tackled correctly by Nintendo. Yep, I agree. So it's a shame. But they don't... Mm. Until recently, they haven't really revisited their past so much now with the little mini consoles but they yeah. should put a bit more effort into it i reckon yeah well like pay a little bit of money and make it better than it like the yeah you know like you see the excitement around super smash brothers and how it has so many characters from all these different things it's like well look at look at that and then look at what it could be yep um so yeah i guess that's they probably feel that people don't care, but that might also be a cultural thing where they want to keep moving forward. And I know in Japan they're always about expanding on what they already have rather than revisiting the past. So yeah. And look, it, it took you know a long time for Final Fantasy VII to be remade. It's still not even out yet. Um, by the time we do the next episode, it's probably won't be out, which will be sometime next year. We'll be looking at the PS5. Yeah, and they teased that with the PS3, and it took. When did the PS3 come out? 2006? Some of that, yeah. Yeah, five maybe. Even. So it's, you know, these things, people want them. There isn't an audience for it, but it's almost like it just doesn't happen because you tell me. I don't know. Anyway, uh, on that sort of topic, we'll talk about some gaming hopefuls, yep. which is a segment that always sparks controversy online. <laughs> Unlikely. But anyway, what do we want to see come out? What do we want to see in the future? I think I mentioned it before. What was it? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Kirby Dream Stars? No, I don't know. Battletoads? What? You tell me. I have no idea. I mentioned it before. So I don't, uh, I've had a mind blank. Well, mine are, as always, Mario Sunshine 2 Yep. and Banjo-Kazooie 3. Possibility of Mario Sunshine is slightly higher than Badger Kazooie 3 at this stage. Yeah. But I agree. I've got a good feeling about tomorrow. <laughs> no, but, but. Nintendo's been working a lot with Microsoft lately. Well, we're seeing um, both of them come to the party on the online front. Yeah. Maybe we're moving in a direction where they're going to be like, look, it's too much trouble. Let's just. That's join forces. So you never know. We might see that Banjo Kazooie throw. Because we did see years and years ago, Nintendo basically had an agreement with Sony, which led to Sony making their own console. Yeah. So who knows? Like the Xbox could say, "Look, we're not selling great. We'll jump on board with you guys." Here's all our properties. But who owns Banjo Kazooie? Xbox. Microsoft. Xbox. Yeah, because it's under the rare name. Rare. Okay. Ah, oh. yeah. Well, yeah. That's in, in terms of games. I'd like to see that'd be two of them. Yep. Um, but anything you can think of you'd like to see? Um, I'm pretty content at the moment, to be honest with you. Oh, well, there you go. He's content. He doesn't <laughs> content. need anything else. No, just just looking forward to um, 
the new Wolfenstein coming out. Yep. Uh, which is not set with uh, Blazkowicz. Mm. But uh, I think it's a girl or his daughter in the future. Yeah. That's what I'm looking forward to. Uh, they are good games. They are. I want to the play last... the PlayStation 3 one, but they are, they are very good games. The last ones I thoroughly enjoyed, especially the New Colossus 2. thought that was a really good game. Um, On the Xbox. Yeah, I beat that too. I liked uh, the New Order, I think it was. Yeah, New Order was good too. Yeah, and then the other one went a bit weird. Like, turned into like a zombie game at the end. Was it the New Order? I don't know. It was the New Order. Yeah. Maybe the other one was the one I really liked. That's a game I'd like to revisit. Um, well, yeah, there you go. So, Wolfenstein, yeah, cool series. What about, well, I guess the last part we'll talk about gaming news. Not that there's a great deal going on. No, um, all we've got recently is, I believe, uh, Nintendo passed, uh, Nintendo Switch mm. in Japan passed the sales of the PS4. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Uh, in terms of figures, in total, uh, Nintendo system currently sits at a total of 8,125,637 as of a couple of weeks ago. So who knows where it's gone altogether worldwide. And why do you think the Switch is outside the PlayStation, in your opinion? Might be the portability of it all. I don't know what the price tag's like on the Switch, but, I mean, it's reasonable in Australia. But I think that Smash Brothers just has such a cultural influence now. Yeah, games like Super Smash Brothers, Mario Party, and Mario Kart, which, you know, obviously people want to play those again. They relive their childhood memories. Their friends come over, it's got online. All the things they wanted when they were younger yep. can now be done online. So why not go ahead and buy it if it's got a good press price tag on it? Easy. You know, it's handheld. They can take it to their friend's house easily, put it in their bag, take it on the train. All the things that they were trying to do with the Wii U, which, honestly, I liked it, but sort of failed. Yeah, because now, you couldn't really take it that far. Yeah, it's, it's a bit big, you know. So, but this is more a slim. It's, it doesn't have a lot of games on it, but it's it's great. It's pretty cool. And, you know, Nintendo are sort of back. They There was, for a while there, people were saying, you know, they're done. Yeah. The Wii sold, like, 55 million. Um. We, the GameCube was a bit of a failure. Wii U was a bit of a fail. Um, they've held strong with the 3DS, but that's, I think, coming to the end of its life. But, yeah, the Switch is probably going to be the future for, future for them. Yep. Anyway, so... We're going to do a quick two-minute review on Mighty Morphin Power Rangers on the Super Nintendo. Now, this is a game that I really wanted as a kid as I was a big fan of the TV series. Uh, I believe it came out in 94, 95, was it? I believe so. Um, I My next-door neighbour had it, and I saw it, and I saw him doing the uh, boss fights that you can do, and I really wanted this game so badly that I even uh, wrote a letter into Santa, mm. uh, and I ended up getting it for Christmas, and I was over the moon, and I still have that exact same copy to this day. Mm. Um, yeah, the Power Rangers, if you haven't played it before, it's done by uh, Natsume and uh, Bandai. And you can choose to pick between the five Power Rangers. Yeah, you've got the blue, yellow, black, red, red, <laughs> oh, and <so> yellow. <laughs> he really wanted it. <laughs> Obviously a fan of the show. What was it called again? Power Rangers. Oh, okay, cool. And um, first of all... I don't know if you can hear the background music, but the music is fantastic in the game. It's done really well for a Super Nintendo game of the time. Um, now, halfway through the level, you will end up morphing into your Power Ranger. Uh, so you end up playing as Jason, and you're going playing as Jason for like halfway through the level until... Uh, in civilian clothing. In civilian clothing until the... You come across the boss and you uh, morph into your Power Ranger. Now, Scott, you just beat the first level of the game. What is your opinion on Power Rangers? Well, so far, so good. Um, it was very enjoyable, the first level. I played as the Red Power Ranger, Jason, um, who would later become the Green. Actually, I don't think that even happened. No. He did not. That did not happen. That was Tommy. That was Tommy, who would later become a pro UFC fighter. Anyway... 
Um, yeah, being the first level of the boss fight was fairly difficult. It took me two attempts, but I've heard a rumor that level two is a lot harder. So, but the game it looks great, and it does give you a password at the end of the level. Um, so yeah, if I wanted to resume from level two, I could with this password. And that's our two-minute review on the Super Nintendo so, I Power guess Rangers. I guess wind us up for wind us down. I don't know how we say it uh, for this episode. Yeah. Uh, we do have a Facebook page. And you can find us on Power on Retro Gaming on Facebook. Just enter it in. Yep. And Instagram is the same thing. Power on Retro Gaming as well. Yep. And we look. We we're always looking for questions to answer. Usually at the end of episode, we take questions from those platforms. So feel free to send us a message, and we'll answer it on the show. Um, it doesn't really matter if it's gaming related, but feel free to send us something, and we'll try to get to it on the show. Yep. And that will be it for today. Thanks for stopping by and... Thanks for listening and power on. Power on. <laughs>